Hey guys, and welcome back to another session on Efficient Python. And today I want to carry on from a previous video where we looked at the map function, and I want to take a look at StarMap, which comes from the ITER tools module. Uh, it's a bit like Maps, kind of big brother, so as in like it sort of does the same thing, but there is a key difference. So to kind of say it as simple as possible, we use map when we have single input functions. Suppose, for example, you have a list of floats and you want to turn them all to integers. You could say, take this list, map them all through the int function, sorted, we're good to go. However, imagine you had a function that takes like two or three inputs. Suppose you have the power function, for example. So if I open up power here, this takes in a base, an exponent, and it can take a mod as well. If you had a list of tuples and you want to map them through this, you couldn't use map. That's where star map comes in. So if you have a multi-input function, we can use star map to do this for us, which is quite nice. So the key difference really is that map will take an iterable, but star map takes an iterable of iterables. So each item in your iterable has to be iterable. So you could have something like a list, and then one of those items could be something like this. And then it would basically like, I suppose I had two of them. Uh, let's see, let's make sure that's correct. So yeah, so if you say you had something like this, it would unpack all of these things and stick them into a function. And then it would then go to this one, it'd do the same thing, it would unpack the six, seven, and the eight, and then pass those to the function as well. So it's a pretty cool one. Um, there is ways you can do this using comprehensions, which I'll show as well. Obviously, it's good to see like what the alternatives are. But in this video, I want to kind of cover really briefly what map does. We'll then compare it to star map. And then I want to show you how to use star maps in three different contexts. So first of all, we'll look at how to use it with some built-in functions. We'll then define our own functions. We'll use star maps here as well. And we'll then finish off by looking at how to do a lambda function with your star map. Uh, just FYI as well, this is trying out a new color scheme in VS Code. This is purely based off comments from the previous video, so hopefully this is a bit more visible. Um, if not, let me know. If so, let me know, I suppose, as well. So first of all, if we take map, let's just do something really simple down here. Uh, this is, video is not really about map, so we'll kind of breeze over this. Suppose I did 10, 20, 30, all right? Now, the job of map is to basically say, take a sequence such as this, and apply a function to this, this, and this, and at the end, return an iterator. So let's do floats, for example, and then we do map. Now, map, in this case, wants a function, so we'll do float, and then we'll do nums. So in this case, it's saying, go through this, pass each of these items in turn to this, and return uh, an iterable. Uh, so if I do floats like this, print floats, and go ahead and hit run, we get this map object here. So you can just cast this straight to a list, but you could do things like next as well. So if I pass this into next here, uh, this should yield out an item for us, and then we're good to go. Uh, or, you know, you could kick them all out in one go and do list. So that's just mapping a single iterable through a function, and then at the end, we're casting it into a list. So yeah, pretty simple. Now let's look at where this would fall down. Suppose, for example, I wanted to use the power function. Uh, I'll use power because I referenced it earlier. Uh, and for this one, you need to pass in a base and an exponent. So if you wanted to do like 10 to the power of 2, you know, we're going to use 10 as the base and then 2 as the exponent here. So I'll really quickly set up uh, an input for this and then we'll have a go. Righty then. So here's my list here. I have uh, an iterable of iterables. So I've just done lists, but you know, don't worry, you can use tuples. As long as that thing's an iterable, uh, it's fine. Uh, and what I want to do is say, pass this to the power function. Do it again, do it again. So what I can go ahead and do is declare a variable called results and say this is equal to star map. Just make you aware I have imported it here. I'm not misbehaving. So I've done from iter tools, import star map. And then we can say star map, and then we can look at the type ints. So the first thing it wants, that's going to be a function. So yeah, you can have power, there's your function. And then it wants an iterable, iterable, any. Oh, yeah, that's not the most easiest to read, I suppose. This is basically saying I want an iterable, and that iterable should contain iterables, and they can be of any type. So in this case here, nums is an iterable, it contains iterables, and they are of any type, they're integers, so they're fine. And we can just go ahead and do nums. And what will happen now is it'll unpack each of these for the power function. So again, just like last time, we can go ahead and print results. In fact, we'll do next and next results like this. Go ahead and hit run. We'll run that, and we can see we get this star map object here, and 100, so it's done 10 to the power of 2. Uh, let's go ahead, 
and get rid of them all. So we'll do list results this time. We'll unpack all of them. There's 10 to the power of 2, 5 to the power of 3, and then 6 to the power of 8 here. And in a nutshell, that is star map here. Uh, I did say I'd show you an alternative. So if you're familiar with list comprehensions or generator comprehensions and stuff like that, you can do it using a comprehension. And I think it's important to see the alternatives. Um, the difference is, I think, purely is readability. And of course, with a list comprehension, you do have the option of adding like a conditional in there as well. So purely just for clarity, let me compare the two. Uh, see what you think. So if I was to go ahead down here and do results, um, let's do V2. Sorry, kind of lazy that, isn't it? And then inside here, if I was to just show you what this looks like, if I was to do uh, IJ for IJ in nums here. So because we have like pairs, the, the I is going to be equal to the 10, the 5, the 6. The J will be equal to the 2, the 3, and the 8 here. Uh, this wouldn't work if this contained like three things or contain one. You get this kind of horrible error on the other side. So let's just show you what this looks like. Uh, this is of course without calling the function yet. 10, 2, 5, 3, 6, 8. So now what I can do is go ahead and do pow around them like this here. So this is passing in 10, 5, 3 as base. And the J, that is the 2, the 3, and the 8 here. And yeah, there we go, just like that. Um, now, the, the tricky thing of this is, if you're doing a list comprehension, this is going to evaluate everything in one go. So just bear that in mind. Your star map won't. Uh, you know, you could make this a generator expression and achieve the same thing. But yeah, what's more readable? This or that? Um, I would argue this here. But you know, if you were in that kind of odd situation where you want to find the powers of i and j, but maybe only if, I don't know, j is less than 4, then you could do something like that as well. So this does have the option where you can pass in this kind of condition, but if you don't care about conditions, you just want to say, here's my stuff, map it to this function, just do it. Yeah, star map's pretty cool for that. But yeah, let's move on. So we've looked at a built-in function using pow, uh, let's take a look at a user-defined function this time. So again, we'll clear the screen. Uh, yeah, we'll have a look. For our user-defined function, we've gone with a fairly straightforward one. And we're just going to calculate the perimeter given the height and width. And just to make it a bit more interesting, I've uh, applied this default parameter called num shapes equals one. So I suppose you pass in a height and a width, but you say actually there's four shapes. It'll do like the whole, the whole thing multiplied by four at the end. And that's really just to show this here, because what I've got, I've got one, two, three, four, five different iterables, uh, but these are different sizes. This one here has a height of 10, a width of two, and there's two whole shapes. This only has a height of two and a width of four, and then this guy here has got eight shapes in total. So just to show you how this behaves when you've got you know, arguments for this, this, some don't have arguments for this, but then star map is fine, it just takes the default. But of course, for this one and this one, we are overriding that default parameter here, which is pretty good. So all we can do down here is do the same thing. We'll set up results as equal to, and let's ask for our results to come back as a list this time. So if we pass the whole star map function to here, it's gonna unpack all of those into this. Just bear in mind that if you are doing this, and this is a really expensive function, and you've got a load of data, it's gonna do everything at once. So if you don't want that, just do star map, and then you can use next to yield the mount. So what we've got to do is pass in our function up front, perimeter, and then I can pass in my measurements here, and then we can simply move to the line below, and we can print off our results. Bring this up just a tad so we can see it, and there we go. So in this case here, so we had 10, 3, and 2. So if you imagine what this would have been like, um, 20, and then 26, but there's two of them, so 26 times 2, 52, yeah. That's worked. So that's gone ahead and properly processed all of those for us. And I get this is a fairly trivial novel function, but the whole point here is to show how star map can do this for us. I've also used tuples here as well. These could quite happily be lists. Yeah, it doesn't hugely matter. As long as it iterables, it's absolutely fine. So, so far we've looked at the built-in function. We've looked at a user-defined function, which is this here. We've done a quick comparison to a list or a generator comprehension. Uh, one more thing to finish off with, I want to show you how this would work with a lambda function as well. So one more time, we'll clear the screen and we'll finish off by looking at a simple lambda, which is then passed to the star map function. So for our lambda expression, I'm going to build a simple function which accepts a string and an integer. 
and it's simply going to return this this many times. So in this case here, it'll do James followed by a space and then the same name a couple more times. Uh, so we can go ahead and construct our Lambda first. I'll do it first to show you what a single function call would look like. Uh, let's just call this call here, let's say Lambda. So this will, need, this will need two things. This will need the name and the number. And then think what this is now going to return. So it's then going to do name times num like this. Now all that's left to do now is call it. So if I just take this guy out, um, and let's just call this temporary here. So we'll do temp is equal to this. I now need to call this passing this as name and this as num. So we can do result is equal to call. And then I think what I've got to pass in now, I've got to pass in temp of zero. So that'll be this. And I've then got to then pass in temp of one. And we'll move this down and we'll go ahead and print result. So let's see what this lambda does. Okay, dun, dun, dun. looks good. Uh, what we could do is do a space like that. Uh, let's see. Ah, I got my orders <laughs> slightly wrong there. If I do this here, this will do this entire string. So again, that should make that correct. Yeah, there we go. Looks good. Okay, so we know what this will do given a single input here. So now that we have our lambda ready, we can say, right then, go ahead and do that exact same thing you did to this, but now do it for this, this, and this. So we'll get this all removed out. And then what I'll also do as well, because generally we, we don't like to give lambdas two variables. We'd like to put lambdas in the place where they're being used. So we'll actually, for now, get rid of this, and this is gonna go right in its place here. So we can do result, is equal to, and let's do a tuple this time, and we'll do star map. And now what I want to do is pass in my two things. So I'll do this and that. Okay, so behind this guy is going to go names here, and then in front is the whole lambda. So I can take this, make sure I get this all correct, put that in here, and there we go. So fingers crossed, there's no obvious syntax errors here, that shouldn't be. And uh, we can hit run. And that looks like it's worked. So in this case, it's taken this and multiplied it by this, this by this, and then Charlotte by two as well. Uh, of course, we could change that. We could do Charlotte up to four. And we can see, yeah, there we go. All those times, looks good. And again, just like the previous one, it's a fairly kind of trivial novel example. But the point really here is just to show how you can use any Lambda or any valid Lambda function along with your iterable of iterables. You know, as long as it can work once with one input, as long as the rest of the inputs are formed the same way, then yes, Star Map will do it for you in that exact way, which is pretty cool. So just to round it off, I want to summarize, we use map for single input functions. However, Star Map, as we've shown today, we can use with multi-input functions. So it doesn't matter if it's a built-in, like the power function, we passed in a base and an exponent, our user-defined function, we wrote that ourselves when we passed in height, we passed in width, and we passed in the number of shapes, or even lambda functions as well. You know, all three of these are valid functions. Doesn't matter what kind of function they are, the star map function is happy to take them. And we also showed as well, as an alternative, if you want to use a list or a generator expression, again, I guess it's really down to you and in the context that you're using it for. Cheers for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next session.